Okay, but first I need the alarm clock. So... There, because I'm used to using L1 as the alarm clock. Dang it. No, no, no. Don't. Come on. No! Okay, now can I just throw the alarm clock there? All right, that's one. <laughs> they took the bill. That's funny. All right. Okay, we'll do this. Do this. And then do that. <laughs> Murray. <laughs> oh, Murray. You're an idiot, but I love you. Okay. That didn't work. Do that. And then do that. Really? Oh, can I just, like, silent kill that one? Can I do it that way? Like, can I silent kill the third one? We'll, we'll try. Well, no, I don't want to try because I don't want it to be wrong. And we'll do that. All right, that, that was a lot easier the first time, or this time. We have a lot more time left. Okay. Oh, bad idea. All right, that works. Okay. Alarm clock one. Alarm clock two. Then alarm clock three. And alarm clock four. There we go. What? <laughs> about the consequences for incorrect scores. Wait a sec. You aren't the judges I hired. It's the scrawny raccoon and his annoying friends. Well, if you want the talent, then why don't you just take them? Oh, wow. How did Bentley duck that? Oh, my aching head. Those talons really pack a punch. Sly! Murray! Wake up! Yeah, I'm awake, but not so loud. I have a splitting headache. Yeah. Where are we? What's going on? This looks like the sawmill control room. Bison must have thrown us in here for interrogation later. I, for one, would like to escape before he returns. It looks like we're pretty well sealed in here. Unless... Unless what? Unless you can fit through that hole. I... I think I could squeeze through there. I'll drop down and try to free you guys from the outside. If there's any trouble, I'll call with this walkie-talkie. You might be able to help me with these sawmill controls. While you guys do that, I'll try prying open that steel door. Given enough time, I might be able to make some progress. <laughs> uh. 
Sounds like a plan. Good luck, Bentley. And remember to shout if I can help you from up here. All right. Wee. Boop. Bentley, you okay? I can't see you from in here, but I heard the fall. I'll be fine. Just give me a moment to catch my breath. Oh no. Well now, Candy Bridges. I should have figured a puny turtle like you'd find a rat hole to squirm through. Well, I just dropped my glasses, had to come pick them up. I ain't like you, boy. I ain't stupid. When y'all were unconscious, me and my boys paid a visit to your hideout and found all them clockwork parts. Lucky thing, too. Arpeggio is willing to plunk down a king's ransom for the whole lot. I even threw in the talons. You sold all the clockwork parts? Arpeggio has them all? I wouldn't expect one of your kind to understand the finer points of commerce. You turtles are too stupid to know a woodcutter from a woodchuck. That's it. Time I showed you just how stupid we turtles really are. Sly, on my command. I hear you. Prepare yourself, Bissad. On guard. Okay, Walnut. Get ready for a smushing. Oh, we have a boss fight as Bentley. Okay, so what do I have here? Uh, I can't make him tiny. I Reduction. What does this one do? Shrink enemies in the area. Yeah, I can't use any of that. Ooh, hover pack would be good. Uh, da -da -da -da. I don't want to throw a bow bomb. Call out which lever I should pull. Um. Okay, circle for logs, square for flames, triangle for saws. Oh, dang it. All right. Whoa. Okay. Oh, there's water here. That's bad. Okay. Square is fire. Okay. Come on in here, boys. Let's get this farming. Okay. Square's flames. Okay, uh, we're gonna flames again. Nice. Uh, well. Okay, we're doing well. Okay, let's get rid of the henchman. Well, he's just the idiot that walked in, so. Oh, wow, I hit myself. Okay. Oh boy. Yep, 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 yep. Thank you. Okay, we're gonna drop it there. Nice, good combo. Oh, that was that was bad. Okay, let's try this again. Oh wow, he's got dynamite for days. Come out, boys. Let's get to killing. All right. Oh, the saws were so close. Sizzle is gizzle. Ten four. Well, that kind of worked. Oh, there was health. Okay, log. Logs away. Okay. Fire. All right. All right. Well, he's the idiot that just walked into fire, so it doesn't matter. Logs. Logs. Fire. Dang it. Logs. Logs. Got it. I've been done in by some four-eyed turtle. Times have changed. Once again, brains triumph over broad. There we go. He escaped. Good job, little buddy. That was some fast thinking. Don't forget about me. You did a great job opening that door, Murray. Thanks. <laughs> uh, attention, uh, John Bisson. Arpeggio's uh, carrier blimp will uh, arrive to pick up the Northern Light battery in exactly one minute. 
Okay, enough patting ourselves on the back. If we're going to get the clockwork parts back, we need to get onto that blimp. The silo battery isn't far. If we run, we can make it. Enough talk, let's move! Alright. Let's try it. Gold medal winner. Shake a leg. That blimp's on its way. All right. We only need to really run not that far. I don't care about the enemy. The guys will take care of them. There we go. Look at that. That was super easy. Just jump on the... There's a freaking bounce pad there. Bentley could have jumped on that. <laughs> Whoa, 4% for that boss fight. That's awesome. As we shut ourselves into the Northern Light battery, it became black. For a few long minutes, we just sat there in darkness. No one dared to talk for fear that John Bassan's men might discover where we were hiding. Time seemed to have stopped. And then, we felt it. We were being lifted up to Arpeggio's blimp. It was all so strange. The focus of all our schemes had been stolen from us. Our clockwork parts were gone. Looking around the inside of the battery, I knew we all felt it. Failure. I was twitchy and ready for action. Any action. Bentley tried to make some sense of the situation by drawing up meaningless plans. But Murray? Murray took it the worst. He just sat there sobbing while the team van floated away over the horizon. That van was his life. I knew I'd have to find a way to make it up to him. Not the van. We had... We had such good times in the van. Bentley drove it once. Alright, um... Uh, Alright, episode 7. Cool, we 100% of that in two hours. Nice. Alright, episode 8. And it's the last episode, too. Anatomy for Disaster. There we were, heading east across the Atlantic Ocean. Stowaways on a giant airborne fortress. Though time was short, we made sure to study up on our unknowing host, Arpeggio. While attending a prestigious boarding school, the young Arpeggio excelled in all subjects, but he never managed to keep up with the other boys physically. Sadly, his wings, due to their small size, were useless for flight. Furious at his feeble body, he focused his powerful mind to search for a cure in the works of the Italian Renaissance masters. Their notebooks provided the springboard for this sinister young genius, and it wasn't long before the Claw Gang took him on as chief inventor. His talents must have been at work repurposing all the clockwork parts for their criminal schemes, and now this mastermind is in possession of all the parts. It's only a matter of time before he puts them back together, and when that happens, well, I'm not going to let that happen. He'd become clockwork. Sly Cooper and the gang in Anatomy for Disaster. <laughs>